Hello and welcome to the second in my series of masterclass videos for Helium. Now if you haven't seen the first video, Back to Basics, I suggest you go watch that and then come back here and watch this one. Now we opened the first video talking about the button layout and why some buttons have the little chevron in, in the top left corner and some of those uh, buttons also have blue chevrons rather than white. Now that means they've got an extended swipe function and I want to go over some of those today. And this avoids any restrictions if you're running in a vertically constricted uh, DAW. Now it's important to note the two toolbars. There's one at the top and one down the left. The toolbar at the top, if we want to perf uh, perform a swipe function, we have to swipe down. If we're performing a swipe function on the left bar, we swipe right. So let's begin with the menu button. If we swipe down on the menu button, you'll see it toggles MIDI through on and off. This is an option in settings that allows a master keyboard to pass through Helium and uh, control whatever instrument you've got assigned to that track. Now by default, Helium accepts any MIDI input and passes it on to whichever port and channel you've got selected for that track. If you don't hear your master keyboard, then check to see if MIDI on is enabled. Now the next button is the beat time button. And when we swipe down on this, we toggle from showing a beat bars and beats to showing time in seconds. So just swiping down on this uh, will toggle the mode. Now swiping down on the grid button allows us to turn grid on and off. And the good thing about this is it remembers the last setting. So you can temporarily turn it off and then swipe down to turn it back on again. And the same thing goes for the uh, quantize button. You can just swipe down on this button to toggle it off and back on again. Now these are shortcuts to stop you having to open up the toolbar and select the option. Now swiping down on the record button uh, opens the multi-take dialog. Now we're not going to go over this just now, uh, but it's an, another uh, additional recording feature which we'll go over at later in the video. And for completeness, swiping down on the remote button opens up the define loops uh, function, which we haven't touched upon. Again, we'll, we'll talk about that later. And the last option on the top toolbar is swipe down on loop. And if you notice when I swipe down, it said no loop selected. Now what this is useful for is you can range an element, a section of the uh, song or track and when we swipe down, notes within that range will be selected. Now, it might not be obvious to you on this video, uh, but what I'm going to do is if I go and long press on the menu button, I'm going to enable invert selection. And now when I swipe down on the button, you'll see it's a lot clearer for you. Now, you might want to enable that function if you're struggling with the shading on selected items. Now, if we take a look at the vertical toolbar, uh, the important thing to know is we swipe right here. And the first option we're going to look at is track. Now, swiping right on the track button uh, toggles the solo status for that particular track. Now, normally you long press on the track button and you get all the track options in here and we uh, we can turn on the solo and mute from there. But this is just a shortcut to solo a particular track. So the next button down with the blue chevron is the selection button. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to make a selection and then go and make a second selection. And you notice every selection I make is adding to the previous selection. Now that's because of the selection mode, which can be changed by long pressing the selection button. But this is just a shortcut. If we swipe right on the selection button, we toggle the selection mode to replace, which means every time we um, make a new selection, uh, the original one is removed. This is the default, by the way. Add, add to selection is something that you need to enable. It might not be something you use very often, but it's there if you need it. So the next button is the clipboard button. 
Now to demonstrate the shortcut functionality, I'm first going to make a selection of notes at the end of this particular track. And then when I swipe right on the clipboard button, you'll see that it's performing a duplication of the selected notes. Normally to do this, as we showed you in the previous video, is you just single press on the uh, clipboard button and pick duplicate from that menu. But swiping right is even uh, simpler. Now the last button I want to talk about is the undo button, which is down here. Now normally when we press the undo button, it'll undo the last operation. So it'll undo the last duplication we made. But if we swipe right on that button, it will perform a redo. Now normally you long press the undo button and you can get at the redo from here. But rather than do that, you can just swipe right on the button and it will perform a redo and reconstruct those two uh, uh, sections we deleted. Now please bear in mind these are all shortcuts. You don't have to remember these. They're just there in case uh, you want to learn them. Now we took a look in the first video at the chord track and how to manually add chords to the chord track. But suppose you already have a sequence of chords. Maybe we've, we've just dragged this from the MIDI clip library. If we want to turn these into a, a chord track, we first have to open the controller line by clicking on the controller button. And then if we long press where it says velocity, we can then pick the chord track. Now in the previous video, we showed if the add chord uh, tool is selected, we can just tap, hold and drag in the uh, lane down here. And long pressing it then allows us to edit what chord that is. But we're gonna, we're gonna try and import these notes we've got uh, in the main edit area. And to do that, I'm first gonna select a chord, the first chord, and then gonna hold, tap and hold on the add chord button and select the convert notes to chord. Now obviously you don't have to do them one at a time, it's just converting whatever I had selected. So if I select more more notes in the editor before I long press on the add chord and uh, then select convert notes to chords. But you can see this process is destructive and those notes disappear and end up in the chord track. And there's a good reason for this. If we left the notes in place, we'd be sending notes with the chord track, the same notes as we had previously uh, within the editor. So we'd be sending doubled up notes, which will confuse the hell out of any receiving app. Now let me quickly undo that and uh, show you a different method that doesn't destroy the original notes. And also has the benefit of being able to copy those notes anywhere within the chord track. So we start off in the same way by selecting a group of chords that we want to copy to the chord track. Now we tap and hold on the clipboard button and with our finger held down, we drag in, into the chord track at any particular location. When we release our finger, the chords are actually copied in there uh, into that particular location. So just to be clear, I'm going to undo that and uh, we'll do the same again. We'll make a selection of, uh, of chords using the, uh, the notes in the note editor. Uh, I'm just going to select the first three chords, uh, tap and hold on the clipboard and then drag anywhere you like in the, uh, in the chord track. Now I can carry on doing this and uh, move a little bit further along in the chord track and then drop another sequence in here and uh, it's a very useful function. Okay, let me long press on the select button and that'll pop up a little menu and I can pick select all and then hit the dustbin icon to get rid of the notes. I'm gonna to go to the media bay and drill down on the MIDI clips and find a chord sequence in here. Now in the last video, we showed you how you could drag these uh, into the editor. But I'm gonna undo that now I'm going to show you that you can also drag them directly into the chord lane and it will attempt to construct the chord. It will not be as it was when it was dropped in the note editor, but it will try and match the chords uh, best it can. 
Now if using either of the methods, drag and drop directly to the chord lane or the convert option, converted notes. If the chord is not recognized, it will try and create a cluster chord out of those notes. So let's show you an example of dropping a chord sequence in there that has chords that we don't recognize. There's one particular chord in this chord sequence that we don't recognize and if I long press on where it says cluster, you'll see it here. Now although this is a valid chord, it's not a generally recognized triad. So uh, that's why it hasn't picked it up. It's just a C chord with a flattened fifth. Now let's briefly talk about being able to build your own MIDI clip library. Uh, something you may want to do if, uh, if you have uh, progressions of your own that you want to save. So as you can see here, I have a MIDI chord progression and I want to save that to my Media Bay Clips folder. Now the first thing I suggest you do is to uh, go to the root of this folder and then hit the create button to create a new folder of your own. So once the prompt appears, just give it a name. I'm just going to call mine My Clips and click the OK button to create the folder. And it should appear in the root of the Clips tab. And if I tap on that, I can uh, see that there's an empty folder there which I can save my chord progression uh, to. So the way we do this is to tap, hold and drag on the ruler to encompass the uh, chords that we want to save. And then hit the export button down in the bottom right corner and give the clip a name, a meaningful name. Now I'll be honest, I'm not actually sure uh, what this is, but I'm just going to call it progressions in uh, C major. And then once I'm done, I'll hit the save button and the chord will appear within this folder. And just repeat that process to create all your, your own um, chord progressions. Now obviously you might want to keep them organised so you can actually create uh, more folders within this current folder um, just to keep things uh, nice and tidy. So you might want to do uh, chords in different keys. So you could create a folder for each and then store those uh, chord progressions uh, in the fol folder denoted by a key. Okay, now I want to take a look at another really important function and that's the ability to deep copy and paste. And know what you're saying? What's the difference? Well, to demonstrate how this works, I've just uh, added a couple of uh, chords to uh, track one. And then if we switch over to track two, you'll see that there's just a handful of notes, but they're all within a certain uh, range. Now, normally, to copy and paste, we would just make a selection and then uh, press the clipboard button and hit copy. Uh, position the cursor where we want to uh, paste and hit paste. But the problem with that is, if we look at track two, you see it doesn't, it doesn't copy track two. It's just making uh, edits on track one. And this is where deep copy and paste come in. So to perform a deep copy and paste you start as usual by selecting a range and you'll see that little white line on the ruler denotes the range. Now instead of just hitting copy we long press copy and you'll see a message appear telling you it's just made a deep copy of the entire song. Now position the cursor where you want to paste, uh, open the clipboard and this time long press paste to do a deep paste. Now you'll be asked whether you want to do the selected track or all tracks. So I'm going to do all tracks. Now, if we switch back to track one, you should see that the notes on track one have also been copied. So every track gets copied if we do deep copy and paste. Now the other bonus of a deep copy and paste is the fact we can move controllers. So normal copy and paste just copies and paste notes. But if we bring up the controller lane and switch to modulation, I can draw in CC1 modulation uh, in the controller lane. And then when I uh, copy uh, the uh, selected notes or the selected range uh, via a deep copy, i.e. long press on the copy button, I can then put 
paste uh, at a different position by a long pressing on the paste. This time I'm just going to do slightly track. And you'll see here it's actually copied the controllers. Now because I did selected track it won't copy and do anything to track 2. So you have that choice there whether you want to do it to the whole uh, the whole song or whether to do it to a single track. Now there are times when you want to insert additional space into a song. In other words insert space on all tracks. Now there's an easy way to do this. If you look here I have a uh, uh, two um, copies of exactly the same chord and notes. Uh, the second copy starts on bar 7. And what I want to do is insert four bars of free space at bar 7. So the first thing I do is mark a loop or a section on the ruler that I want to become free. Everything from bar 7 I want moving all the way up four bars. Now because we want to add additional space into this, either beats or time, we long press on the beats stroke time button and from here we can pick insert and we can say all tracks and you'll see everything's now shifted up to B11 including track 2. It's a great way to insert space into a song. Now if we go and have a look at the controller track there, you'll see that even the controllers have been shifted up. Now this functionality is really part of the deep copy, but it's available to us by long pressing the uh, beat time button. Okay, let's move on to another important function, which is the ability to apply scales. So for this demonstration, I've got four chords that are in the key of A major. Now I want you to pay attention to the horizontal stripes, the black and the grey bands that go across the screen, denoting whether we're, the notes are on a white uh, note or a black note. Now to engage a scale, we have to long press on the time signature button. And you will see this little floating toolbar pop up. On the far left we have an enable button and when I enable that I want you to notice that those horizontal bands that go across the screen have changed. Now right now the black uh, bars designate a note that falls on the scale and a white bar represents something that's not on the scale but we can long press menu and turn on invert colors and uh, I prefer this mode. I prefer uh, the black ones as being notes that, I, that are out of the scale and white being notes that belong the scale. Now having a scale enabled does not prevent you from actually adding notes that are not on the scale because sometimes you want to run between a series of notes that are slightly inharmonic so we don't restrict you on this but if you were to long press on the quantize you can actually ask it to quantize uh, all notes to the scale and when I select that if you watch the notes on the black they move to the nearest notes the white note uh, acceptable notes on the scale now another feature that can be used alongside scales is the randomize feature so let me just uh, at long press on the select button select all and delete this bunch of notes here and go to the main menu, just tap the menu and pick randomize. And this randomization dial dialog will pop up. Now by default it's set to randomize notes within the range of octave 4 and 5. But we could change that uh, quite easily and uh, I'm going to take that down to 3 and 5. Now if I just press the randomize button here we're going to see an error because we need to specify a range for the random notes. To do that I'm just going to select uh, four bars from beat two and then it randomizes again and you see a whole bunch of notes appear. Now these notes are not conforming to any scale they're just randomized and if we play them back uh, you'll hear the notes playing. Notice as well that they're all quarter beat in length uh, and that is due to the grid size. Now if I zoom in a little bit I want you to notice these 12 buttons at the top of this dialog with the uh, notes of an octave and they're all colored blue at the minute but if I this hit this apply scale button you'll see that 
only the notes that have complied to the scale are active. In other words, only the notes that are coloured blue will be used when I hit the randomise button to generate a new set of notes. So let's randomise a new set of notes and see if they comply to the scale. So it looks like all the new notes now land on the scale itself. So let's see what that sounds like. It should sound a little bit more melodic. So let's speed things up a little bit by uh, choosing a different grid type. Currently we're on quarter notes, so if we go something like eight notes and then randomise a new set of notes, that should sound a bit more speedy. Okay, now let's limit that range just to one octave and change it to polyap so we're playing more than one note at once. It's only really when we're playing uh, notes, doubled up notes, uh, that we even notice the scale. So let's see what this sounds like. We can always decrease the complexity to create some less clutter and leave a few empty spaces if we want. Now that didn't do it for me so let's put it back to high intensity and enable probability. Now if you remember from the first tutorial we showed you the probability tool and if I switch that on you'll see that the uh, notes have all got different colours uh, depending on the probability that the random probability they've been assigned. So that scales in a nutshell. Now the last thing I want to look at today is something called multi-take recording and this is useful when you're trying to record uh, a loop we can have multiple attempts and then compare each attempt to see which one works best. So these are a set of chords I've got for a backing accompaniment. And I'm going to try and record a lead uh, over the top. So I'm going to switch to track two. And then what I'm going to do is long press on the record button and you'll get this pop-up dialog and I'm going to click multi-take. Now for those of you that remained uh, awake during the uh, shortcut section you'll know that just swiping down on the record button brings up this multi-take dialog. Now if I press record in the transport up here and then start the transport running in AUM, Helium will start uh, cycling that loop. But nothing will actually be recorded until I start playing notes. So let's record some notes the next cycle and see what happens. So now we have four extremely bad takes and we can pick the best out of those just by tapping on them and previewing them. I think to be honest two was the best.
so anyway, I'm playing on an extremely bad keyboard. But basically, you listen back to the takes and find the one you like best. And I like two, so I'm going to hit two, and then I'm going to press the use take button. And once I press that, the dialogue will close, and that take will be uh, applied to that track and the rest discarded. So ensure take two is selected, and then press the use take button. And there we go. So that's just about it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, thumb up the video, and I will see you next time.